So, hello everyone. As Javier already said, I'm going to talk about data. I'm not a musicologist, neither a composer, I'm a cellist. And this is not specifically my field, but the organization thought it would be a good idea to do something a little bit different with more numbers and so on, also show a little bit of our work as CIMUC. So, as Javier also said in the introduction, I'm going to talk about the different data we have collected with the CIMUC. From the time we began to work about two years ago, we, we wanted to create a network between musicians and so that's why we started working on different projects. The first one is Chilean Musicians Abroad, CMA. It's a project that aims to collect the information about the musicians that are living out of Chile. And when I say musician, I include composers and musicologists, of course. Uh, we, this is not a scientific work, it's more about the data that we collect and we know that it, it can have some information that, that is not precise, but we have a methodology that, we, that I will explain. Then we have the second project already working, these two projects, you can find it on an, our webpage, is Chilean Composers, CC. In this case, also we are starting with basic data, data about composers but not just the composers that are living out of Chile, also the composers that live in Chile and the ones those don't live anymore. So all the composers from the Chilean music. And in progress, we have our most uh, ambitious project. This is an online catalog of Chilean music. And I will be talking, and even though it's not uh, already online and we are still working on this, but in, in a final stage of, of preparation. So I start with CMA. Chilean musicians abroad, and also the, the, the first thing I got from the people, hey, how do you collect the information? So our methodology is we started with, of course, personal acquaintances, the people I know that are living in Germany or Javier or close friends, because we start because we knew a lot of people. But then also come the self-report. We, we have a form in the web page where you can fill in and send the information, but also there's people who write emails, people who send us messages in social media. Also, social media are a good source now because we are all connected, as we have discussed here. And sometimes we find people we don't know with a piano photo, and this is in Turin, and we start to find information, and there is a pianist in Turin that we didn't have any idea. But also, also this information, we also try to check the data, the data with a second source. So if someone tell me, hey, there is a trumpet player in Paris, I try to find another source, a musical program, a, a journal, uh, or something where, it, where I can find and I can confirm that these people is doing music in this city. So I try to, we try to be a little bit precise with the information, even though we know that the people are moving and there is some other difficulties to keep always tracking from the information of different musicians in all over the world. At the day of today, I, I will say this is our project that is in the uh, most advanced stage of development. We have been working since 2016, so we have a little bit more than, more than a year to collect information. And, and there is some very interesting numbers to see. Uh, at the day of today, we have 200 and eight total entries, over 200 musicians living out of Chile, which is, for me, now it's quite a number. In the beginning, I never thought it could be this number. And I know that soon we will be increasing maybe between 250 and 300. I, I think it, it will be the final number. Of course, I can never say a final number because there is always people coming and people coming back also to Chile. So from these 200 names, the first question is, where are going the Chilean musicians? And if we go to the uh, continent, the first place is Europe. Even though, yeah, we have talked about the European music and so, and yeah, more of the three-fourths of the people are going to Europe, even though Chile is so far away, and even though there is just one uh, Spanish-speaking country. So a lot of people now doing music in Europe, principally in music, the people who go out of Chile go to Europe. The second place will be, I put North America because I wanted to separate from Latin America. That's why not Mexico is included, but USA and Canada, also there is a lot of people doing music, living there. Uh, some of them are 
for a long time, and we have over 11% in North America. And the third in order will be Latin America. There is musicians living in Argentina principally, and Brazil, Mexico, some people in Colombia. So that is all. That are the three places in Australia. We have about one percent in Asia, Asia and Middle East. Also about about one percent. And in Africa, we don't have anyone. So if anyone knows about a musician in Africa, you can give us the information. The countries where most uh, when we most Chilean musicians have, we have a United States with twenty one. Maybe it's a little bit more. We don't have so a big network, but in one and a half year we have collected a lot of information about people in USA. In France, we have 24 musicians. Probably there is more. There is new people coming every year. Also, people going back. We have to uh, actually I deleted some name the last week from France. Some something someone who went back to Chile. In Austria, we have 25 musicians, which is quite a lot because it's really a small country with eight million people. And you can imagine which is the country with most Chilean musicians? Germany, 66. It's a really big number. And probably we will be still increasing in when we find new information. And this year, this academic year in October, there is at least four, four or five people that came. And so every year is new people coming. We have talked also about gender here, and that's also information we can extract from this, or our database. I, I insist this, our list is not the final number, but from all these names we have collected, we have thus about 30% of the musicians are women. That is probably, uh, that is actually higher than the proportion that we find in composition, because in uh, we, we include here the inst instrumentalist, where uh, there is more and more women coming out of Chile. Then we have, as I said, a sp different specialization. I, I talk about composers and musicologists. So musicologists as are the smallest group. Most of them, I will say, they are studying. There is a few of them just that they're working abroad. It's about a 3%. Then we have composers. I could think that this number is a little bit underrated because composers are a little bit harder to track because you can find when, when a performer plays, this is the play who is, who, where he's living, but with the composition it's different. And also I, I must say that com composers are a little bit more private with the information. So I think with the time maybe this proportion can be changing, but of course the biggest number is from the performance. It's really 84%. And yeah, when we talk about Chilean music, we, we talk a, a lot about composer, but there is so much musician from Chile now doing music, and most of them also don't do Chilean music. We. And the performer groups, also interesting, is not just people that play an instrument. We have all, also conductors and singers. Conductor actually is very impressive for me because it's a very hard field. And in Chile, we don't have so much a very good formation of conductor. Like there is no so much university teaching. And to have a 9% of the 100 of performers, it's a quite impressive number doing. And today, Juan Pablo gave, gave me a new name. So maybe that, that will be changing soon. Singers, there is always good singer, Chilean singer going out even a lot of them, they don't do a big career in Chile, and then in, in abroad, they, they are a really big soloist. We have here in, here in Vienna two singers working in the Wiener Staatsoper. There is another soloist who already made his debut here from Valdivia, from my city, and I didn't know him. So there is always new singers coming out. But instrumentalist is, yeah, four-fifths of the, of the sample, and because all with the, all this movement from young orchestra, there's new conservatories. So instrumentalists is always the people who is more going out of Chile. And in absolute numbers from instrumentalists, we have the biggest number is cellist. Someone could say because I'm a cellist, it's a little bit overrepresented this num number. It can be because I know most of them, but I must also say that there's a lot of people studying cellist, cello, and even though violins can be a little bit underrated probably there is no so much difference between them. And if you think in numbers with 27 cellists, you can feel probably all the professional orchestras in Santiago. 
but with 20 violins you can feel maybe one. So there is still not a very good proportion if we think in the way of professionalism. And also with 27 cherries, there is no way that they are all coming back because there is no work for so much people. And pianists, we have 18 pianists. It, it's possible that there is a, a little bit more, but uh, it's a very fair number, actually. We, we think we have most of them already in our database. So that will be about CMA. That was our first database project. And this year we started with CC, which is Chilean composers. And as I already said, it's people living in Chile, living abroad and not living anymore. The methodology is, is quite similar, but also for us here it's important uh, the academic publications like books, there is papers, a, a really good one from Christian Guerra. He was organizing a lot of information. We, with these databases, we want to, this information, put it easy for a, any, anybody. We know this, there is a, a lot written about composer, but it's not easy to find. And it's not easy that no, someone go and find the name. With Chilean composer, we're still not so, I, I will say, not so advanced. We have, at, at the time, just, just 183 total entries which we started, of course, with the main names, and then we, we start to, we, we went going uh, bigger the circle. Uh, and at the moment, we collect the data about the names, the year of birth and death, if it applies, and gender. So we start with this. We aim to have more information, like how many works they have composed, or maybe if we know the city where they are based, but, but all this information, in harder to get and also it's changing so we try to have first the basic data when we have a good number we start to go in a, in a in a deep uh, way of information we have talked a lot about the women in, in the composition and that's an, a statistic uh, statistic we can find but first the oldest entry at the time is a woman it's a woman carmela mckenna we started from there we know we we can go even further, but we, st we are starting now there. And the youngest one is Lucia Jimenez, also a woman from 1994. But the proportion is, yeah, that we, the proportion we have is 87% for men against 13 of women, which is a small number, but I will say it's overrepresented because we have the focus to include women in the list. So I have searched about a special woman and I know it could be even probably less if we if we f get a, a final number or a bigger number. So probably it will be about 10% or so. So that's the proportion we have found with this with this database. And with the year of birth, also if we organize the information from decades, even though there is not complete, I think it's a very representative from what it's happening in the composition world. So we have here the, from the 1880 until 1890, because we have the last decade, that's the last, that is the last decade we have the full information. From the 90s, we still don't, I, we don't think we have until 99. But that is the amount of composer birth uh, that was born in each decade. So you can see how it's increasing in the last decades. Of course, we get more information from here from the composer that's transcend to, through time, but also we have talked about how now we have more universities teaching, more teaching, more people also doing composition. And this is a database that it's just about composer, but we wanted to to go further and our, as I said, most ambitious project is the online catalog of Chilean music. So the idea of this is to have a place with a, a, a web page with a search engine, a platform where you can look about which works there is from each composer. Not to find the scores, but to know, because f before looking for a score for a string quartet, you have to know which string quartet there is for, for, uh, for of Chilean composer, and most of the Chilean musicians don't know about the the music that is written. So we started this idea the last year. We we got some some funds to do it. We 
uh, we worked with the musicologist Christian Spencer. He was selecting the data, looking how it could be organized. Also, we uh, worked with a Chilean programmer computer. And I think in this case, we find found more complex or more difficulties with the programmer things, even though we, we thought it could be the other way. Um, as I said, yeah, this is work of Chilean composers. So we started with 27 different composers. The idea is, of course, going uh, to all of them. But our first publication, it's already it's finished, but we are working on the platform to incorpor incorporate it to our web page. It's with 702 works from 27 composers. That's w w the number w that we are taking now. but. Uh, we want to go bigger because we think it's better to start with someone with, uh, with some number or with some amount of work that we can manage, and then we will be adding more work and also uh, uh, becoming feedback of how it worked this search line. From we have 50 works from Carlos Zamora, from between 20 and 50 works from different composers. But yeah, we aim to we all these databases. Wh what is important for us that not just something that we do and we left there. We want to be keep working and that the people that maybe visit the webpage for other reasons, for podcasts or for the um, musicology or for some article, and co can fin find more information. And it's not just a database that is in a special webpage and just the people who want to see this information take. S and yeah, with this project, we hope to get in the next three to five years uh, about 10,000 works from at least 150 composers. That's what the thing we can we can do if we keep working in a, in a graduated and a well organized uh, way. So that is what we are doing in the database with Silk. Thank you. Isn't it great? <laughs> I am very proud of this project that we began and we have done, and it's a work in progress, of course, and um, as Tagoro said, it will get better and better, and I think it has a, a lot of potential. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could tell us, uh, just uh, name the different um, criteria that we can find in this CMA, so the Musician Abroad, when you go to, oh, maybe, is it possible to, to see the list online now? Mm, yeah, it's dangerous, but... <laughs> yeah, the moment we have here, we find the the information by name, by a specialization, not just general categories, as I said. So we have the specific ones. So each instrument, we have the country and the city here, not just the country. And at the moment, with the member of the CIMUC, we can have more information direct from the people. So if someone is working like Alejandro in the Vienna States Opera or Alonso in Latin String, we also put this information from the members of the CIMUC. And the idea is to go further and have a special section from them. So if you go in the future to Alejandro Pizarro, you can click on it and see maybe his photo, what has he done, and so. And that's why because we have the network with the members, with the other people, we cannot expect to have the information. So that's the way we want to work as an organization and not just in a, yeah, that we do things for the other people. So we get the information direct from them. Uh, and you can, um, the, you can click here by city and we can, yeah, sorry, by country. It's easier. We have here all the information organized in a different way. So it, if it works actually quite good. It's something that is not only valuable for musicologists, for example, some th somebody, a music journalist, or somebody who's looking for the information just for the sake of the information. Yeah, someone asked me on Facebook uh, two weeks ago, hey, there is some Chilean musician in Weimar. I'm going to Weimar. And I said, yeah, we have one in our database. So it's very practical. Yeah, so it helps also to uh, support the musicians who are abroad uh, to uh, be um, uh, engage in some jobs or job opportunity where some, sometimes there are projects, people want to um, place something uh, or uh, 
build a small group with uh, Chilean musicians and they do not know who is who, or who is where, and so, so it's um, very practical. And yeah, can, can we see the, the other list? Or? Chilean composers, you know. Yeah, th this one is, uh, is a little uh, newer, so yeah. we, uh, we have a list uh, categories, but uh, we are showing only this because we, we have uh, all, uh, this is a criteria to put them on the list, at least the year and the gender, the year, the birth year and uh, and the gender. Yeah, I, I can show some private information. <laughs> we have more information from uh, a lot of CC them. We have yeah some countries, uh, the city and so. But if we don't have all the information, we don't we don't want to show something incomplete. I can show also a little bit of our uh, catalog if Javier allows me. I, I'm not. I know it, it's not ready, but. Um, if the internet goes with it. Yeah, maybe it's not the moment. <laughs> yeah, the, the catalog is, is now uh, in another platform, so it doesn't work very smoothly. Uh, it takes a little longer, but. Yeah, so at the moment you can see here some works. And if you click on anyone, over to the show. Oh, look, Carlos Zamora, the first one. It's random, actually. You, every time you go in, you find different works in the first place. And you click on Overture del Pucará, the year, some observations, uh, the premiere, the I instrumentation. It was for the Editorial Nacional. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. correct, but th that's the kind, of the, kind of the kind of information we are doing here. And we hope also in the future to have scores and so well, and you can well, Maybe uh, to have the scores from those who allow it, uh, but also have the link to where you can find the scores to, to the um, Editorial Nacional. Or yeah, at the moment, the comp these are the composers we included. It was under the criteria from uh, Christian Spencer. We also write some composers to to get the catalog from living composers, and we don't get any uh, all so much answer. So there was a lot of people we wanted to include now, but we couldn't because we didn't have the catalog. We write Carlos Zamora and he sent us the information that, that helped us. So we need to <laughs> work in together. And I think that it's um, um, valuable to, to notice that uh, when this uh, catalog is m more, uh, it will never be uh, ready because there are always no new composers and so But when um, I think when it's online and the other lists are, are working okay together, then we can almost feel the whole process of looking for a, a musician, looking for a composer, looking for a piece um, from Chile. And that is something I think that uh, a few countries have. So I'm very proud that we have this. Any so question about the database? We can, oh, please, Eileen. Just, I think it's the question that have <laughs> that we ha we have had all du during those two days of conference, but I'm still wondering uh, how do you define your categories in, in a way who uh, who is the composer or who gets to be on the list? Yes, right. who 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 is allowed, you know, <laughs> like to be in the list in as a composer, a performer, or 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 it's open to any, I don't know, any. No. Uh, uh, I, I two questions. <laughs> any any work, for example, if you find some catalog or of musicians that m maybe are not well known or this, uh, I don't know. That's one question, and the other question is, well, if it's open to everyone or it has some. Uh, I don't know, some different definitions or speci special definitions. And the other question is if, if you have, um, I don't know if followed, but uh, if you have considered other sources of quantitative sources, such as the studies that the uh, Consejo de la Cultura have done in general of music uh, industries, and other institutions such as uh, OPC, Observatorio de Política Cultural, okay. and Trama as well, that had Trama Colectivo Trama, I think it's, it is, that had done a very interesting uh, research about uh, 
not just music, but uh, cultural and creative arts uh, in Chile, like in and, and very how, how uh, on working conditions and on and very quantitative results. So maybe it's useful to take an account some of those as well. So I think for our database is the same that happens with the concert we organize and so uh, most a lot of people ask me if hey i play jazz i'm from chile can we organize something with the simuk and i think the the answer applied from the very beginning that we create the simuk so you can keep the arguments which kind of music or yeah, which kind of uh, composer i think for us the the one criteria that has always been problematic and will continue to be problematic is uh, not uh, to decide who is a composer and who not but uh the kind of music. So we have to draw a line. We do not know where, and, we, and I can show you a lot of examples where we have done things that are moving in the border. So we, we try, and I personally like to be as flexible as possible, but we cannot uh, accept, uh, or accept, yeah, we cannot work with all kinds of music because that would uh, be too much for us. Uh, we have to focus in this thing that we have been talking about today, uh, music of written tradition or music, classical music for some people, or you know. And of course, there are uh, musicians uh, that are in the border, especially in our uh, podcast for electronic music, for example. Uh, we have had uh, very different positions there. We have had uh, conflicts of concepts and of uh, programming, and um, we have tried always to keep the flexibility, but somewhere you have to draw the line. And I think uh, there's no way around it. Yeah? Um, yeah. I, I mean, if we would want to work with all the music, probably we could not be able to do, do these specific things. And we are focused on something that we think that it's not, uh, it's it doesn't have a focus. Even in the music that is already someone left behind, we didn't hear anything about music in the last debates, last Month of debates, present. This kind of music is even even less so uh, studied or talked, or there is less space. So, <laughs> so we are essentially two or three, four people working, and yeah, we cannot organize the uh, money tour even if we would like to work with this kind no, of music. Yeah, yeah, I know, but in in understanding that it's under this frame of classical or serious or. There is no uh, yeah. of, of if, if someone is good or yeah. not, that's not someone we can, we I can judge. I wanted to say also that uh, the main criteria, once we know that it's classical music, uh, is that the person says, I'm a composer. So we do not ask for to see scores or qualify them or anything. So if he's a composer, of course we checked because uh, everyone can say everything, and then, but somebody knows him, ah, okay, he's a composer, he comes on the list. And of course, uh, we we do not have this um, this uh, how do you say that in English? This uh, we do not want to be uh, scientifically correct yeah. in any way. Mm -hmm. This is um, some, a work in progress that is coming from from um, empi empirically, and I think it's valuable as it is. But uh, that takes me to uh, back to the um, what you said about the other um, uh, data that you can find that maybe has a lot more. I think the one from the uh, um, Fondo de la Musica, um, or Consejo de la Cultura, is yeah. very wide and it's, yeah. it's yeah. everything mixed and it's a chaos. But anyway, if we were musicologists working on this uh, scientifically, we could take this and make something, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's stronger academically, yeah. but. But yeah. it's, not, it's not the idea, I think. Uh, at least now, uh, we are open to projects, so if you want. <laughs> Microphone for. So, how open is going to be? Because there is this discussion about open databases. How open is going to be the database? I mean, if I if I want the Excel file, the sheet file with all the the information to do my own calculations and or my own research, how open is that? We, we still haven't faced this no. problematic. Maybe if you are a member, you can get the <laughs> Yeah, it, it's I, a possibility. I am. I am. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I say. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's always hard to leave the work open for anyone. But I if we know that you are working and w you are a member of us, it will be very hard to say, no, you don't, you can don't, you don't, you don't have access to this because all, actually the information is there. It's just a easy way to get it. If it's an Excel, it's not information that we had to keep for our own. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have this kind of. At the moment, 
neither do we have this uh, excellent. So uh, we are working on it. But uh, for us, the principle is uh, as open and as uh, free as possible. Um, uh, we are open to collaborate, especially with if people is interested in this kind of work that is so specific. We are not of the idea to close it to us. It's it's the, the, the same I was talking about the composers. We we wanted to to have another names from living composers, but yeah, after three four emails and you don't so get any answer, yeah, you cannot if have you, it. Simply. If you come to us and say, please give me the Excel mm -hmm. Excel uh, sheet, I will tell you let's do the project together. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, just to think about that about the op also I am I'm also doing a project on like 19th century Chilean composers and um, um, salon music that we have, I don't know, 2,000 something pieces. But but it is about, it's very different because I know the practical side of this, which is great, you know, any musician can go and, uh, and think. But a lot of the discussion has been for us about the, the open access of the database. Because for example, RISM, the, the international repertoire of uh, musical sources, they open their database from printed music from the 15th century to the 18th century, you know, thousands of course and th there has been so much research that has been allowed because of opening the database completely open so e every day it changes and you can still download it as an excel file and then do whatever you want with it it's like so that i think it is it is uh, for the digital humanities having the open database constantly available and for doing research is a, is a huge thing i think i think for us also a challenge is that uh, and it's the next step i think uh, it's not only gather the data in the Excel sheets, but uh, put it in a way that you really want to look at, look at there. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, the access is, all, is yeah. Uh, one of our first objective. Uh, we have talked about the bridges between the audience and uh, performers and composer, and we think we, we uh, part of this is to have the information available for anyone, so in, in the easiest way possible. That's why, yeah, that's what, what we want to know, and we are not especially musicologists, so maybe we have this. And also, when I when I when we I have I was working with Christian Spencer, he always had this musicologist idea to have very specific things. But at the end, we were discussing: Do we need? Do the people need the people? The most people that are gonna look for this information? Do we need this? And yeah, we we are always trying to keep this this end of a very practical uh, access to the information. Yeah, and I think the next step, or maybe the second next step, uh, to make it flexible, make it uh, personalized, so that if somebody's looking for a piece for flute, they just find pieces for flute, and do not have to read about uh, premieres of uh, clarinet. Uh, but it's difficult. I know the most uh, catalogs are from universities, uh, they are not very um, transparent. No? So well, yeah. The idea also, yeah. If you click, you you has all this information specific. But also the idea is in the future. I was talking with Jose Manuel to have the link to the, yeah, Editorial Nacional and buy the to buy the score. That will be also helpful for uh, that there is the access to to uh, to the score. At the moment, is yeah, there is some scores you can put online, not so much from dead composers, but th if they are available in a in a uh, digital source like a. Uh, digital Editorial Nacional, the idea will be that every piece that is in the Editorial Nacional uh, that is in our catalog, there is a link to buy it. That's practical things for me but as a performer. I wanted to add also that what usually happens in these uh, works from scientif uh, scientists yeah, or scholars that they do things uh, the way they <coughs> the way they the way they are uh, used to to read the, to read or to find from other um, from other people uh, from other colleagues, but you, do you you not uh, you do not get the feedback from uh, maybe performers that are looking for a piece or want something else when they look uh, in the catalog, and that's why uh, I hope that if we uh, put this in, uh, into work for a wider uh, uh, public. Um, it is going to be correcting itself because feedback is very important for us. Yeah, we will, we will know what uh, should be on the list now. What, what what you saw is not ready, but um, maybe we will take some parts of that uh, after a second click, uh, so you can see just the main information at the first time, and so these things. Um, 
so it's it's uh, at the end if if the uh, the wider the the, per the people are that um, are going to use this, um, the better for everyone. No? Another question? <coughs> yeah, I I don't have a question. What I have is uh, a little speech. It's not a speech. Uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> another speech. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. That is what, what I, I want to say. Thank you very much. It's been a really wonderful time here listening to uh, everybody. But especially, uh, I realize now uh, physically what are you doing. And it is amazing. It is a lot Thank of you. work. It is, a, yeah, you are working on a really huge project. I, I can imagine how much time you spend doing it. If you have a personal life or something, because it is really just one personal of us. Just one of us. Yeah. You have to <laughs> personal life. W what is that? <laughs> uh, life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I want to congratulate you really uh, from from my the, the deep of my my heart. Uh, thank you very much for thank everything you. Thank you've you. done so far, and of course, being here, I think, in my personal point of view, uh, we. Because I realize everything you have done, uh, we, everybody, can help in terms of uh, tell everybody what are you doing. Exactly. And engage people. Uh, yeah, you're right. There is more people uh, living abroad, uh, even in Chile. And of course, the, the, this database you are doing just for, not for fun, but I think you are you want to engage people to be members of the society, but even though people could could uh, participate it without being a member of something, the the thing what I want to say is thank you. <laughs> Eventually. You're welcome. You we do it. Yeah, we go with to pleasure. the panel discussion. Okay, uh, 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 we have another. Yeah, uh, very short. Uh, please, please. please. Yes, I find also excellent work. Um, normally, this kind of public uh, data ba uh, 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 banks are publicly funded because it's a common good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's about funding from a Chilean agency or...? Yeah, from the l just uh, the last project, yeah. We got a l fund from the last project, yeah. Yeah, because it's not just uh, about making money with this, but uh, at least to have a kind of remuneration for the whole, whole work <coughs> that you invest. Uh, and, and, and since it, it is a uh, working process, uh, it is a continuous work that you have to invest to keep it uh, in life, yeah. yeah. The large catalog uh, it was financed by the Council, National Council for the Arts and Culture. It was a project we had to apply. It was our initiative. And um, of course, the, the, the musicologist and the programmer, they were paid. And uh, But the other list that we have done just parallel to our normal activities. And of course, if we had more uh, people and more money, Resources, yeah. we could have a lot more now. But that's the way it is. <laughs> Practical question: uh, Do you have you um, uh, communicated with other international or Chilean musicians uh, out of Chile, like uh, like individually or uh, or organized in societies and other kind of guilds that actually they are, for example, I, th I heard about a. A guitarist, classical guitarist abroad, or something like that. So I'm wondering if you have made some connections with this kind of organizations, or in terms to uh, putting their names also in this database, or to do something together. What kind of organizations? Uh, of musicians, Chilean musicians abroad. Uh, I've heard some uh, of. Uh, um, but organized by instruments or genres like uh, guitar classical guitarists abroad or something like that? I think that? I heard something about guitarists uh, in Germany. 
something, but I I have never met this. Uh, uh, they have a Facebook page. Maybe you can look for them. Yeah, Make yeah. It I mean, because it, I think it are sim obviously they are not trying to do. I I don't know them, <laughs> but I'm, I think they are trying to connect musicians abroad to do uh, to perform. But maybe it's a good way also to communicate with these kind of groups to incorporate them. In the, in the we are, and to do uh, we are very closely related with a Facebook page that has 2,000 followers, I think. Uh, it's uh, run by Felipe Elgueta, and uh, it's called Chilean Musicians Abroad or something mm -hmm. like this. And um, uh, Felipe is a member of the CIMUC, and we have a project together maybe for the future. So it's uh, there we have a close mm -hmm. relation, but uh, actually for physical groups of musicians Outside of Chile, I think. We, we don't know about. No. no. Uh, and sometimes they are only in the paper or they have a web page, but you see the last uh, update was done four years ago or so. Or it's not easy to, to get in but contact. But we have contacts, almost every musician we know there is out of Chile. It's not that we select people. If we know there is a guitarist, we write him and we invite him to participate in all the possible ways. So uh, all the people we know, we contact and and we try to gather the so much as possible people, yeah. Yeah, and um, one thing, uh, because you mentioned the being a member of the CIMUC, one thing is that we con um, gather the information from musicians that are abroad, just like in these lists or so, and other thing is that we invite each musician uh, to be a member of the CIMUC, and that is, um, of course, better uh, in every sense, but also because um, we depend on uh, this, is this small budget to run a lot of things, uh, so... Um, this is a uh, 100% uh, honorary work. We do not get any, we, ca we cannot, by law. In Austria, we are not allowed uh, to get money from this. Uh, but we need money f to make the projects. We need uh, to pay the telephone and the web, thing. The web page. The web page yeah. and so on. So if you uh, have colleagues, and of someone, some of you are not members, but I think everyone is member here. But um, you can bring them up. Bring them up. Okay, so yeah. we go to the last panel discussion. <laughs> Thank you again. We are going to prepare a little here and then we are back.